What's going on, everybody? First, of course, land acknowledgement. I'm recording this here on Tiwa, occupied Tiwa land. And together, let us continue the fight for Black and Indigenous liberation. So, as you know it, back at it again. Back in Black Action, Zach, your host. This is controversial. So, uh, today I like to get back to talking about somebody I don't really enjoy talking about, but he's very important as he is concerning, um, and that is Eddie Edegon. And how I think that he is tied to the union, that the Albuquerque Police Officers Association. I don't have anything concrete on that, but watch it or listen to this clip. It is of the Albuquerque mayoral debate that took place September 28th, I believe it was, 28th or 27th, I don't know. A little education is in order here. I think we're quickly realizing why the city is in the type of shape that it is, as well as our county. Uh, the, cr the agreement can't be modified or changed, all right? We need to understand that first and foremost. It is what it is. The reform is in federal court. I think it started before uh, Tim's administration. The city is plaintiff and party to the consent decree. Mayor Keller himself, in working with the Department of Justice, has actually issued more hurdles and made it more difficult to get out of the DOJ. Yet just last week, they're talking about, well, we might go well uh, get loose. The question specifically was, does it make it harder to recruit officers? Of course it does. But the city of Albuquerque is a plaintiff in all of that. We have to accelerate our compliance. We need to get these guys out of here so we can get the police officers uh, to do their job. We have to engage the Department of Justice and not lay down for them. I think any police officer would agree with that. They're tired of being handcuffed and they're tired of being told what to do and having to run everything through 50 checks. And it increases the murder rate, 96 murders, another one last night. We have to accelerate the compliance, fight them, remove them as quickly as possible, improve the morale of our police officers. This pre-trial services, I've already referenced it. It's the Arnold tool. It's out of the purview and the control of the city of Albuquerque and the mayor's office, but again, using the bully pulpit so we can fight back and let them know that we have a turnstile justice system because of that implementation. Thank you very much for your time. Now, since you've been following along, you know that Sean Willoughby and APOA and his entire propaganda campaign and most of his supporters, right, they like to use this language, handcuffed. Officers being handcuffed. Now, as is reported, the Albuquerque Police Officers Association hasn't, on paper, endorsed any of the three mayoral candidates. But that doesn't really have to include things as PR campaigns, right? This public relations campaign. Now, in all of, in everything that I've heard from Eddie so far, it's the exact same language that Sean Willoughby uses all the time. The exact same. And that clip that you just heard is evidence of that. It was clear as day. I mean, to refute any of that would be absurd. And none of them... They all say, you know, they want to comply with the consent decree. They want to implement these reforms and get them out of here as fast as they can. They all talk about it. You know, even, well, Tim Keller and Manny haven't really answered that question, right? And the question that most concerns me is none of these people talk about disciplinary actions for noncompliance to the consent decree. They don't talk about, you know, operational compliance. It's down 59%. That's what it's at right now. Well, according to IMR 13, IMR 14. Well, we're rating on IMR 14, right? So let's hope for that. Anyway, I have a, one article here covering the most recent um, mayoral debate. This one is written by Austin Fisher of Source New Mexico. I'm going to pick some things out of that um, to, to go over and talk about. So one thing that all three candidates, and especially in this article here, um, 
is highlighted that they like to talk about the need for more police and how the, the more police will reduce crime. And also in this mayoral debate from the 28th, um, Keller goes on to talk about how he's building a new police department downtown and even a new having a new police initiative downtown has reduced crime or something like that. And it, it dawned on me one thing was made very clear for me that the presence of police in any specific location will prevent crime, right? People aren't going to obviously do something in front of a cop to deliberately get themselves in trouble, right? That's stupid. Why would anybody do that? So I get it. That's, that makes sense, right? But what it will also do is drive out people from any specific area, people who are normally targeted or profiled by police, right? So this leads to what? Gentrification, um, oppression, you know, and economic change in, well, socioeconomic change, right? In any given location. And then that leads to not only like gentrification, but, you know, segregation of specific communities that are normally targeted, you know, un disproportionately targeted by the police, especially here in Albuquerque, or houses, individuals, you know, and that's another thing that I want to get to. But... Yeah, let's talk about this real quick. Um, in this article by Austin Fisher, he did an interview with Celinda Guerrero. She's with Albuquerque Mutual Aid, a good friend, great organizer. And uh, I love showing up to their actions, volunteering for their work. Um, he talks about how the result of last year's protests in the, in the defund movement, right? And... Eddie Aragon, in the screenshot I'm about to show you here, goes on to talk about how Keller promoted a certain level of lawlessness in downtown and to, went on to talk about the, uh, the obelisk and the Juan de Onatia, just really just getting really kind of racist with it, right? Well, he fails to acknowledge the fact that Keller has increased, you know, the police budget along with, you know, city council had a lot to do with that too, and continues to increase the amount of police. So, it can really, he can really, with that, he can really speak to the more center-leaning liberals and, you know, the conservatives within the community to gain their vote. It kind of, so him even trying to advocate for, you know, movements like the Black Lives Matter movement or something like that last year. It's kind of really like, it's just kind of like a spit in the face to us, you know, who are victims of it, of police violence, police and state violence, and who have to watch it and feel that pain. And who are organizing to, you know, to fight back against it, you know, to and to heal our communities. You know, and to these people, it's the the goal of police, right, is, is to really to protect property. And the houses people have a lot to do with that. And in this next article that I'm about to share with you, let's see, one that I'm about to talk with you about. It's from KRQE. And the headline is Homeless Can't Becomes a Scary Problem for Local Spa Owners. A trip to the spa is supposed to be peaceful and serene, but the owners of, of one Albuquerque business say that's not the case lately. Homeless individuals have set up an encampment nearby and have caused many problems, and the owners 
saying they're scared to go to work. So on every corner, no matter where you go, said Anne-Marie Fleischman, the owner of Luminescence Beauty and Wellness on Carlisle near Montgomery. Fleischman says she's used to seeing homeless encampments all over Albuquerque. Now one has popped up right behind her spot. Fleischman says she and her business partner, Danielle Lithu Wong, reported the encampment to the Albuquerque Police Department, 311, and the mayor's office. Now the situation is de-escalating, and just recently, one of the people living at the camp tried breaking into their spa. He was running full force at the door, trying to pry it open, said Lith Yu Young. She says he ran he ran around the building and threw a rock to the window. They could have potentially hurt an employee or a client of mine, said Lith Yu Young. Now they say they're both scared to go to work. They're not only concerned for their own safety, but the safety of their staff and clients. With daylight savings coming, the sun is going to be down earlier. I work late hours. It's scary leaving now. The Fleischman, after seven years, Fleischman says they worry their only option may be to pack up and move to a new location. The Solid Waste Department says they were out on Tuesday cleaning up the camp. Fleischman says that the camp burned down on Tuesday morning. Solid Waste confirms there was debris from the fire at the site. So, the number of houses people has increased dramatically over the last year all throughout 2020 caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and you know the moratorium the the eviction moratorium lifting all over the country so this is obviously going to create a problem for a lot of people you know houses or or unhoused or house people who have home you know and the push to criminalize these people because of financial disparity is disgusting and it's inhumane. These people shouldn't be talked about like this. Why not report on why these people did that? What was missing that caused these people to do that? They weren't breaking in for any given, for just, just to do it because they're unhoused, just because... No, they could be looking for shelter. They could be looking for food. They could be looking for money to get food. Or to get a hotel. Motel. Whatever. To get what they need. Now, that's one thing lacking that all three of these candidates don't really ever talk about. How do we get the resources that these people need? Now, I'm not somebody who has answers for that I don't but a lot of people do like grassroots organizers like Celinda Guerrero a lot of people have these answers and that's who we should be looking to right that's who any good mayoral candidate should be getting tips from organizers on the ground out there trying to heal the community not not just criminalizing or f forcing them to move out move just displacing them out of the city arresting them for drug addiction and if they refused you know that's when they try to move them out of the city it doesn't it doesn't work like that so i don't feel very confident about any of it you know and and not Manny either especially not, I don't know I know I don't talk about him much but he was talking about you know having the police and business owners work directly together further you know proving my point that the job of the police is to protect property you know or as Sean Willoughby and Eddie Erdogan would have it, would be to just beat the shit out of people because it's easier. You know, it's, so back to my point, I think I kind of switched away from it earlier. You know, the PR campaign that is Crime Matters More and how it was kind of weird for all of that to start right around May, right? And then this mayoral candidate arises using the same kind of language. I mean, 
if you don't believe, like, if, if you think, if you don't think I'm correct on that, just go back and go through some of my content pertaining to Sean Willoughby, and then listen to things that Eddie says. Because I feel like it might be blatantly obvious. But, anyway, um, I'm going to be doing a reading soon of my work, of my piece that was published recently on Living and Fighting, the Southwest Coming. Um, I'll be doing that tomorrow around 3 o'clock. Wanna join me? Tune in on YouTube. Uh, yeah. See you then. Be safe. I love y'all. And uh ooh.